Greetings, everyone. Uh, I am Tiamo Matabani. I am a clinical psychologist by profession. I work at Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital as the child clinical psychologist. So I've been here since 2019 um, at NMCH, and it's really been an honor to work for this institution. So when it comes to cures for mental health illness, we have treatments. Um, and again, like I said earlier, it depends with the type of illness you have, as well as the severity of the illnesses that you have. So whatever mental illness that you have, depending on its severity, we can treat it. So that's when you consult with a psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist will do a whole lot of different examinations and interviews to be able to prescribe what is best for the particular condition your child will have. So some children do not need to be on treatment long term, but it is for a certain phase in their life that you find that you might be taking treatment. Similarly with things like depression, you might take depressive medication for only a certain period of time, but you might not be somebody who struggles with um, severe depression that you are on treatment for the rest of your life. However, if you do need the medication for a longer period of time, we would absolutely say talk to your psychiatrist. They will help you function better. You will always function better when you're on medication, especially if you've got mental illness that is disrupting a lot of areas in your life. You do need medication and it will help you. And when you're on medication, you also go through psychotherapy and other forms of therapy. Some people go to um, church as a form of therapy or go to um, do sports as a form of therapy. So use different forms to help you be able to manage and cope. That way you'll do better with living with your mental illness or being cured um, from your mental illness. So there's different types of interventions or psychotherapy yeah, um, interventions we use. So with children, um, we sometimes use what we regard to as play therapy. Um, then we let the child relive their world at home, at school, on the playground. They relive it when they're in play therapy. So we begin to see things and patterns of what actually is happening in their lives and things that are causing a disturbance to themselves, their inner self. So we pick them up in that way. Then there's, LM, there's other therapy modalities such as brain working recursive therapy. We use that often when children have experienced something that is traumatic. So we help them, we help them through the trauma um, by giving them powers <laughs> or them giving themselves powers to be able to combat whatever it is that is a monster or a hurt in their lives. Um, then we've got um, therapy modalities such as TheraPlay. So in TheraPlay, we do activities that challenge children um, that offer nurturance, that nurture engagement, because all of those are part of the principles that help a child become, a f yeah, to know that challenges happen and have to happen because that's how they develop and grow and develop personalities um, and develop strengths. So we use that as well as one of the therapy modalities that is available. Then there's scent play therapy, there's narrative therapy, there's so many forms of therapies. It, and cognitive behavior therapy, so it all depends on how old is our child, what is the presenting problem, um, and what do we think is age appropriate for this particular child, because they're unique and special in their own way. So the therapy is tailored for them. So this one is very serious. When your child is hyperactive, um, lies, um, tortures other kids, uh, breaks things, tortures animals, this is very serious. And as a parent, you should take it serious because now we're moving to what we call conduct disorder or conduct behavior. When you start torturing others for your pleasure, 
that is not okay. People don't just hurt people. But when you purposefully hurt people because you want to see what they're doing, that is a form of pathology that is very serious and could grow. So when you start seeing your child torturing animals, torturing other kids, and that could be different things. I don't want to mention them on this platform. But yeah, I'll mention kicking, for an example. When they start kicking at animals or kicking at siblings, that's not, that's aggression, that's violence. That is not something that we condone and that is not something as a parent we should condone. So we reprimand that behavior and we seek help from clinical psychologists or counseling psychologists. They're the people that work with behavioral issues. Educational psychologists also work with behavioral issues. Um, but when we really, we need to do investigations of what's causing such a behavior. Um, and from that, we'll be able to decide whether the child has other pathology that requires medication or not, or if this child needs to be in a behavioral program with their psychologist to be able to help them through their anger and aggression that they might be experiencing. And different things could cause such behavior. Um, many things, many things. Um, how things are in the home, um, domestic violence in the home, um, peer pressure at school, rejection at school, many things could cause children to be violent and act violently. So when they do, it is serious. Before it becomes a real conduct disorder, um, seek help from psychologists. They're clinical psychologists, educational psychologists, counseling psychologists. We will do the assessments and refer appropriately. We're talking about bipolar disorder. Um, we're talking about a mood disorder. Um, and with bipolar disorder, you find that there's episodes, we call them episodes. There's episodes of a, what we call a manic episode. Um, sometimes you might have a hypomanic episode. Sometimes you might have mania. Uh, or sometimes you might have, you will have, a depressive episode. So we call them in episodes because when a person has a manic episode, um, even in children specifically, a lot more the adolescents, their manic episodes are times where they've got a very elevated mood. You know, their self-confidence is out of this world. They believe they're the it thing and no one can touch them. So they, they're, the, they're the cream of the crop beyond the cream of the crop. That's how they see themselves. That's how they portray themselves. Um, they can go for days without sleeping uh, because they've got energy. So they go orientated. Either they'll be focused on a task and that's it. You know, they're just doing this thing. And they can't be sleep or anything because it's going to disturb their focus and attention. And they sit on this for days without sleep. Or they would have a non-goal-directed way where they just agitated Psycho we, regard, we refer to it as psychomotor agitation. They're just, just roaming about, but there's nothing concrete that they're actually doing. So they talk a lot. They, they we regard it as pressure of speech. They are talkative, like one way. There's no stopping. You can't interject. They're just rambling. Um, there's flight of ideas in terms of they're always thinking. There's just something they're thinking throughout the, uh, the entire episode of, of mania and that can last for about about a week okay when it's hypomania it's more or less about four days where they're acting that way then that episode is actually followed by a depressive episode of about two weeks at that point in time this person is completely depressed their mood is low they have um, no desire for anything. They might also not be eating anything for a long time, or they might be eating a lot more, but they've got no energy to do things. They don't want to talk to people. They feel very irritable, especially in children. You see them, you'll see more irritability in the kids or a lot of aggression or just anger um, when they're experiencing more of a depressive episode. Um, and that's when, yes, they're not okay. Um, and I think the other thing with the mania, sorry, that I forgot to mention is that they can get themselves in a lot of trouble because their decision making is quite distorted because they might blow out a credit card of a hundred thousand random friends 
or on something that they didn't plan with money that they don't have. So that's what really happens when you have um, a bipolar mood disorder and experiencing an episode. And yes, it can be treated. Um, when you see this person going for days without sleep or they're just irritable and so on, the first point of call can go to casualty. At any hospital, they'll have a psychiatrist. They will call on the psychiatrist and they will help stabilize the patient and start the patient on the treatment that they require. If you can't get to them, go to your nearest GP, go to your nearest clinic. There's healthcare professionals. They'll see what's happening. Explain everything that you're seeing. The behavior. You're not the doctor. Don't worry. It's okay. I'm not a doctor either. But we describe what we see. Tell them what you see, what has been happening for the past few days. They will know what needs to be done. They will diagnose and they will start treatment as required. So yes, there is treatment for bipolar disorder as well. When it comes to cures for mental health illness, we have treatments. Um, and again, like I said earlier, it depends with the type of illness you have as well as the severity of the illnesses that you have. So whatever mental illness that you have, depending on its severity, we can treat it. So that's when you consult with a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist will do a whole lot of different examinations and interviews to be able to prescribe what is best for the particular condition your child will have. So some children do not need to be on treatment long term, but it is for a certain phase in their life that you find that you might be taking treatment. Similarly with things like depression, you might take depressive medication for only a certain period of time, but you might not be somebody who struggles with um, severe depression that you're on treatment for the rest of your life. However, if you do need the medication for a longer period of time, we would absolutely say talk to your psychiatrist. They will help you function better. You will always function better when you're on medication, especially if you've got mental illness that is disrupting a lot of areas in your life. You do need medication and it will help you. And when you're on medication, you're also going through psychotherapy and other forms of therapy. Some people go to um, church as a form of therapy or go to um, do sports as a form of therapy. So use different forms to help you be able to manage and cope. That way you'll do better with living with your mental illness or being cured um, from your mental illness.